today we are discussing the situation in Pakistan today. There have been several reports from Pakistan indicating that Pakistan is in a very serious situation at the moment. This is not the first time that Pakistan has been designated as a failed state. For various reasons, there have been occasions when Pakistan was on the verge of collapse. But one way or the other, the country was kept floating. First by the Americans, now by the Chinese, and uh, there has been a continuous state of instability in that country. Although Pakistan became independent a day before India, it took them nine years to, uh, to frame a constitution. Like that, they have always been behind India in its development of the nation. And also, it was never a democracy. Even when there were democratic leaders in power, the army was in control. So the joke about Pakistan was that while other nations have an army, in Pakistan, the army has a nation. In the sense that whoever was in power in Pakistan, it was the army which controlled everything. And in that way, people were denied democracy. Uh, there have been changes in government by peaceful means, by elections, but these were not very frequent. So one, complete, the situation has never been free of military power, whether military openly rule the country or otherwise. So as a result, there have been many occasions when Pakistan has been written off as a state, as a, it used to be designated as a failed state. But it continued basically because people at large felt that Pakistan and India were alike in many ways. And that is because of the continuing conflicts and difference of situation between the two countries. And therefore, there was a tendency in the world to consider India and Pakistan as some kind of equals. But in terms of power, in terms of population, in terms of any other factor, if you take into account, India and Pakistan were very, very, very different. Uh, there have been wars between India and Pakistan, and every time India was able to win the war, then when um, both India and Pakistan became nuclear weapon states by various means, we, by our own, our own indigenous technology, and Pakistan, by using Chinese technology, became nuclear weapon states, and that also created further stability in the situation. So now there is a complex situation in Pakistan where it is not only a matter of no democracy, but also a complete collapse of the administration on the one hand, and also economically big uh, serious troubles. More than that, also, there have been several terrorist and extremist groups operating in Pakistan. Sometimes they were used by the government, but then sometimes the terrorists and others are confronting the government itself. So there has been um, there have been multiple sources of in, internal and external conflict in Pakistan, and extremism and uh, intolerance of diversity and dissent were very common in Pakistan. A narrow vision of Pakistan's identity was part of the, part of the problem. So it is threatening the country's prospects of social cohesion and stability. And part of the reason why this became rampant recently because of the inability of the state institutions to resolve grievances of the people. And this has led to revive violence as an alternative to negotiations. So peaceful political transition has taken place in 2013 and 2018, but as it reaches most towards election in 2023, there is a fragile economy and a deepening domestic polarization. On top of all that, Pakistan also had devastating floods in, uh, and it caused, caused a lot of damage 
agriculture and health sector were more or less destroyed and uh, the governing governance and the economic stability are in danger. So China's presence, of course, has been either positive for Pakistan or negative, depending on China's own interests in the region. The China openly supported Pakistan against India. It supported Pakistan's stance on Kashmir. But at the same time, Pakistan, it was, China had a very firm grip on Pakistan as a country. Then extremist groups along its border with Afghanistan. And there has been tension between the Pakistani forces and the Taliban in Afghanistan, whom they themselves have installed. So with all this, uh, the uh, situation became worse and worse. And of course, Prime Minister uh, Shahab Sharif came to power and uh, Imran Khan was ousted. So internal stability was also a victim of all the situations. And recently, General Asim Munir, a former head of the Pakistani intelligence, was appointed as the chief of army staff, which also uh, created instability. And so the Pakistan's deepening political and economic crisis has fueled the instability in the country. It has its foreign, its foreign exchange reserves have tumbled uh, and they have to take out a bailout package from the International Monetary Fund to sustain itself. So there is internal conflict and it's suspected that one way or the other, Pakistan might try and uh, to distract attention, point to an external enemy and it could be India. So short-term political uh, pain with political fallout make Pakistan uh, in a very difficult situation. The inflation has gone up to 24%. Wheat and oil imports have suffered. And the economic corridor where China was supposed to build cooperation with Pakistan has also not been functioning because of terrorist attacks. High oil energy, high energy, power, energy prices and fuel prices, and rising unemployment, and uh, flight of investment. All these have contributed to the present uh, pathetic situation in the country. So they are leveraging uh, political positions to extract support from parties. And uh, the army itself is a problem because the army keeps its very tight control on the government. And uh, no reforms are working. So this is not a new situation. Uh, earlier, whenever Pakistan was in trouble, the United States uh, used to support it. And that is why people used to say there are three A's in Pakistan. The army, the Americans, and Allah. So since the Americans and the army have failed, now they have only resort to Allah, they say. But it is still continuing. It could have had a huge market in India. It could have made profits. If only they were willing to have trade with India, the situation would have improved. But uh, all this, as, as a result, there is a 28% increase in terror attacks in 2022 alone. And uh, so the uh, situation is very grave in Pakistan. And now there are also several groups in Pakistan who are trying to create a breakup in the country. There are several groups. One, of course, is in, uh, um, uh, the, in, the, in the area of uh, occupied Kashmir, Kashmir, which is under control of Pakistan. There have been a lot of unrest. And uh, there are other groups, Baluch, Baluch groups and others, are also trying to break up Pakistan. So on the one hand, they have political instability, they have terrorism, they have uh, economic instability, uh, prices going up, inflation is high. And on top of all that, there are various groups within Pakistan 
trying to break it up. So we do not know where Pakistan is going. There is considerable, con uh, considerable concern uh, that uh, instability in Pakistan will also create uh, instability in India. And India has also always favored of a strong and united Pakistan uh, because whenever Pakistan fails or breaks up, it will be a uh, it will be a it will not be favorable for India because you know that uh, uh, there there was in uh, 1971 Bangladesh was separated. That was the first time that Pakistan uh, was broken up into to two pieces, and now we do not know how many pieces. Pakistan will uh, will become in the in the near future. So the, recently there was a power outage. Completely, Pakistan was completely in the dark. Two hundred and twenty million people were in the dark because of the failure of the grid, and also uh, food and cash were not available, and uh, a very very grave situation has developed. Uh, so it is. Uh, Difficult to uh, predict what may happen to Pakistan. There is a Pakistani Taliban called Tariq Pakistan, which was uh, part of a spy agency, and Taliban, Taliban terrorists are haunting Pakistan territory. So it may it may manage to get support from IMF. But at the same time, that may mean that they have to reform the economy. And reforming the economy and bringing about peace is not easy when the political and economic situation are in such dire straits. India is watching, the whole world is watching to see what happens in Pakistan. But certainly it doesn't bode well for Asia or South Asia. And uh, everybody is waiting to see that somehow Pakistan is rescued by IMF or any other agency or China, without which Pakistan cannot survive as a country for long. It is a nuclear power, it has the capacity for nuclear attacks. So if it becomes desperate, that will also add to the confusion in the situation. So there's a matter of concern. We do not know how it will go, but uh, external assistance alone can support it. But external assistance can be utilized only if, if Pakistan is able to stabilize. So everybody is watching, and we hope Pakistan remains peaceful, united, and stable so that there is stability in the entire subcontinent. Well, that is the problem. If you look at this region after Japan towards the South Asia, you will find that there is not a single country which is democratic. India is the only democratic country, which has continued to be a democracy all through its independence. So there is something fundamental about Pakistan. The, the army, the army has always exercised power and uh, therefore they did not allow any democratic government function. And therefore these continuous uh, military dictatorships have changed Pakistan into a different country than than India. So the reason is that the military is political and uh, the, the constitution is not respected and uh, whoever comes to power becomes come, falls into the hands of the army. Like Imran Khan had come to power through a democratic process, but when he contested on his own, he only got one seat. But it was when he worked with the Taliban and the military and other uh, powerful agencies that Imran Khan would come to power. But they themselves abandoned him, and therefore democracy failed again. So this is a situation which is very peculiar to Pakistan. And uh, unless there is a fundamental change and a new constitution, it may be difficult for Pakistan to return to democracy. <laughs> Yes, they are virtually, uh, you know, begging for support. IMF will not deny money, but the point is IMF will have its own conditionalities, which will be difficult for an ineffective government in Pakistan to respect. Mm -hmm. 
So it's similar to Sri Lanka, but Sri Lanka, it was more of a debt crisis. Here, it is more than that, because instability has been rampant for a long time. Political parties are not able to meet the grievances of the people, and therefore, violence and terrorism are taking over. And the foreign minister, Mr. Uh, uh, in, uh, um, the son of uh, Mrs. Mrs. Bhutto is now the foreign minister. And uh, even though he is looking for help outside, he has been using very harsh language against India, even at the United Nations. Sometimes they talk about peace with India. Sometimes they talk with war with India. So there is really no clarity as to what they want. And uh, since India and Pakistan are nuclear powers, that also adds to the concern in the rest of the world. Recently, the foreign, former Secretary of State uh, in his uh, book reported that India and, China, India and Pakistan come very, had come very close to a nuclear war at some stage during the Trump administration. This has happened in the past also of near crisis. But what is holding it is the, is the threat of annihilation because nuclear war, nobody can win. And that is why there is no war at the moment. There is some kind of a balance of terror there. Uh, but uh, how Pakistan will come out of this, it is far from clear. Thank you.